All right. Today, I'm going to show you a video on how to uh, turn the AC2 output on on a Victron inverter. So I'm going to share a screen here, and we're going to get into it. So what we've got here is an online VRM portal. So I'm going to use the VRM portal. You can access the inverter directly if you want to, but let's use the portal for this one. You're going to go to device list. You'll see the devices come up and remote VE configure. Now, if this is your first time or it's a new computer, you do want to download the software from Victron to actually enable you to edit the um, downloaded file. So I'm going to click on download now, open a new tab and just go Victron software. And that will bring up the downloads just so I can show you what to download. I've already got this on my laptop. Download Victron Connect, that's always going to help. And download VE configuration tools. So this is now accessing the file from the inverter itself. And what we want to do is basically turn on a hot water cylinder element when there's excess solar energy. So uh, that means when the batteries are pretty much full, we want to turn an element on so we can divert the excess energy into hot water. There are a few different ways you can do this. Um, and today we're going to talk about assistance. So I'm going to delete these assistants that I've already got in here and add one up, add a relay assistant and programmable relay, start the assistant. And which relay are we going to use? You can use any of the relays on the inverter itself, um, but we're going to use the AC out two relay which is basically the AC out two terminals, phase neutral on earth, and it'll turn the phase on um, according to these rules. And that will just give you 230 volts. So you could run a pilot wire or anything you like. We're gonna set the relay on. And we're gonna do it on various um, set points. And we've got DC voltage, and we've got charge state or um, state of charge. So these are the main ones you might want to use. DC voltage, charge state. Now, I don't think it's, well, it's not very good to select both or more than one to turn the relay on and off because it can get lost. It can sometimes turn on, maybe miss an off signal and stay on. You don't want that to happen. So it's better to keep it as simple as you possibly can. So let's do it on state of charge. So you can do it on DC voltage. When the battery voltage gets up to a certain point, turn it on. When it drops back to a certain point, turn it back off again. But let's do it on state of charge. And these are extra options you can do, but no, we don't want to put those in. And when the state of charge is higher than say 99%, so when it's almost completely full, pretty much is full, turn on. And that's as simple as that. Now you also need to add another assistant, same assistant, to turn it off again. Start the assistant, AC2 out relay, set the relay off, and we're going to do it on state of charge as well. Skip that. And when it's lower than, depends on what you want to do, but Generally, it's, if, if it were to turn, say, the element on in the afternoon when, there's, when the batteries are full and then it starts hitting the hot water, but then the sun starts going down and the state of charge starts dropping, you want to leave enough in the battery to last overnight. Um, so you don't want to drop too much lower than your um, on state of charge point, but you don't want it to just drop up and down, up and down. So I wouldn't set it at say 98. I might set it at 97 or 96. So for the argument's sake, we'll do 
Now, this all depends on how big the element is compared to how much solar you're expecting at the time, how big the batteries are. Um, so state of charge works exceptionally well for lithium batteries because you know the BMS is always accurate. Um, for other batteries, um, so lead carbon, lead carbon are pretty solid, so state of charge is quite good there. But for some batteries, you, you may decide you want to use voltage, uh, but then it gets into a bit of an issue when you're trying to decide whether it's on for the absorbed voltage or the float voltage. And when it drops into float and it turns off, is it going to turn back on when the absorb comes in? So there's a there's a fair bit of thought that needs to go into this, but state of charge is a reasonably reliable one to turn these off and on. So then you just click close, click yes. I want to save the settings. And then you click upload. Now, what it's going to do is when you do upload this, it's actually going to turn the inverter off and back on again. So be aware of that. They're going to, you're going to give the customer a power cut and you're also going to lose the internet connection unless the internet router is on a UPS, but you're probably going to lose the internet connection for the period of time that it takes for that internet to hook back up for the system to get back online. So you select that and it will just automatically update and pump that up in there. It seems to turn off at about the time that it writes the assistance. And it will turn back on, and after maybe two or three minutes, you'll get connection back to it again. And I would advise you to actually do another download again, uh, just to make sure that those settings have actually taken fully into the inverter. And you should always be doing that. Um, okay, so any questions? Give me a yell. See you next time.